my hallelujah belongs to God. My hallelujah belongs to God. He deserves it. He deserves it. He deserves it. My hallelujah belongs to God. Good morning, my special MGM tribe. Wow. <laughs> This is this is this is it this is it. I'm recording this because um, there's no internet connection at the hotel where I am in Accra, and um, well, I put my hand on the plow and I cannot lie to God that I cannot record this and then upload it later. So let me better be honest and come and sit outside, uh, find a quiet place and uh, do this um, special morning glory moment of um, the last day of August, right? I mean. There's, there should be no excuse why I cannot do, um, I cannot lead this MGM on this day. I mean, I don't have to be live at all costs. So I'm very um, happy that I can record this. And um, we are looking at uh, the second part of this um, interesting series on honesty. And the last time on, that was when, Monday? Yeah, Monday um, when I was still in Kumerika, Kumasi. I was looking at honesty with men, honesty with man, starting with our own selves, right? And today I'm going to be leading the prayer on honesty with God. Okay, so let's um, start with the word of prayer. Father God, I want to thank you so much for this morning. I want to thank you for this opportunity. I want to thank you for my brain that refused to adapt to um Accra time and, and stays with Cameroon time and gets up at two wakes me up at two AM instead of three AM. I thank you so much for that, Father. I thank you for health. I thank you for providence. I thank you for my family and friends. I thank you for the growth in faith. I thank you for all what I'm learning and sharing and all what we as a community are learning and sharing. I thank you for the feedback I'm having. I thank you for the community that is growing, Father God. I thank you for just so much. And I thank you for your word in a very special way this morning because it is full of encouragement, of assurances and reassurances. So we shouldn't fear not. Frankly speaking, honesty is the best thing we can do for ourselves and in our relationship with you because when we are honest, you really know that we need you and we need you in so, so, and all areas. I know you know it all, Papa, but you also like it when we talk to you about things. Which father is there that doesn't like for their child to come to talk to them in all honesty about something? And so, Papa, help us today. Help us to know that it is just so important. We cannot even lie. We cannot hide anything from you. So there's no point in doing that. David is such a wonderful example, King David. Even in all his messing around, he was always just so honest. And he was like, Father... I know I've fallen so short. We've learned from Adam and Eve. We've learned from Cain. There's no point in telling a lie to you because you know it all. And that when we lie like Ananias, Ananias and Sapphira, the consequences can be fatal. It might be easy, Father God, to lie to our fellow brethren, even to ourselves. But it's not worth it telling you a lie, Papa. And you know it all. So give us that grace, Papa. Give us that grace. Holy Spirit, come and take control. Every day, may we be able to invite you in our lives to lead us on, to help us, so that we don't have any reason to lie to you, Father God. Yes, we struggle. Yes, some struggle more than others in being honest with you. But there's no point. Because you don't reprimand. You don't punish. You might chastise, but for a moment, out of tough love, Papa, it's so worth it. I myself know that when I started being clean with you, honest with you, my life has only gone from glory to glory. Peace, peace, peace that the world cannot understand. May it not remain only my portion. May it be all of us our portions in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, tribe. So um, I'll be reading from um, Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse 21. And... Um, 
it's very interesting. I think it's just one verse, right? And the Apostle Paul says this, For we aim at what is honorable, not only in the Lord's side, but also in the side of man. And on Monday, as I said, I was looking at um, doing what is honorable in the sight of man, but or oh, and what is most honorable is doing it in the sight of God, frankly speaking. And sometimes it might be like it's so tough, Papa. It's it's difficult. It's 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 hard. It's like how oh, why should I get up at three thirty a.m. four a.m. and come and sit out here in the cold in a quiet place, Papa? Oh my goodness, I would have loved to stay in my room. But to be very honest, I might be making some noise that is going to affect the neighbors. And um, yeah, God doesn't want that, right? So as much as it is God's work, I don't know to have to be disruptive. So I come and sit out here and um, I'm doing what is honorable, I believe. And um, yes, this is honorable in um, the Lord's side. And it is the Lord's doing. He gives me this grace. He gives me this energy. So I come and sit here. We have to learn how to do that. You know, when we lie, like Cain lied, and am I my brother's keeper? Whereas he knew very well where his brother was or what he had done. <laughs> Who was he deceiving? You know, when God said, Adam, where are you? And then he's uh, like, he didn't know where he was. <laughs> and then after he said, what have you done? And he's quick to accuse. He says, the woman that you gave me. But when God gave him that woman, he was very quick to say, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. But now when something was wrong, he was very quick to throw her under the bus in front of God. What are you doing like that? There was no way God could chastise only Eve and, 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 and spare Adam. No way. No way. Because Adam actually was the one to even be leading Eve and reminding her, telling her of what God has said and all of those kind of things. So we need to be very careful. We cannot lie to God. We cannot Let's look at what 2 Timothy um, chapter 2, verse 14 to 15 says. And not only can we not lie to God, we cannot lie about God. And sometimes, you know, people are talking about God and they're saying some things that don't make sense or all of those kind of things. Well, what you can do as a, a servant of God is make sure that what you are saying is in alignment with God's word and you are not exaggerating and you are not scaring people away. And you're not doing all of those kind of things. I think that is being honest with God. Representing him for who he is. Don't go exaggerate. Don't go uh, uh, um, be too, um, what, I don't know, passive and all of those kind of things. So 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 14 to 15. Was that chapter 2? Yes. A good soldier of Christ Jesus. A worker approved by, by God. Remind them of these things. That is what you should do. And charge them before God. Yeah, remind them and charge them before God. But not to, not to quarrel about words. Not to quarrel about words. Which does no good. But only ruins the hearers. So don't be... Damnation. It, it, it will only scare people away. And that is not being truthful. Because God is a loving God. God is, there's no condemnation in Christ and all of those things. So be very careful because uh, honesty with God means that it's just like when you send somebody to the market and you give them money to go and buy something. Let them buy that thing and then buy it for the amount and come and tell you that I, this is what I bought and I bought it for so and so amount. Don't come and lie. Say, no, I bought it for 50 just because you, you want to keep, or you say I bought it for 100 because you want to keep the change. You cannot do that to God because God sees it all. He knows it already. So when he's even asking you like that, it's just to give you an opportunity to redeem yourself, to kind of like, ah. So let's be very careful. So we should remind people, we should remind them of these things and charge them before God. Of course, reminding them that ah, God knows it all. Oh. But we don't have to quarrel about words. No, let's refrain from that because it does no good. It ruins the years. It scares people away. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. And you know when he says, put on the armor of God. Well, put on the armor of God and stick to that. And then, well, don't 
compare yourself to other people. Don't chastise other people because that's not also being honest with God. God created everyone. Let, let them, leave them to their God. You focus on your own self and on your message and, and on how you are representing God and how you are letting the light of God that is in you shine. You know, if you have the light of God in you, you don't need to fight with another person. You don't need to, you don't need to, I don't know, I don't know. You don't need to mega platform and all of those things for that light to shine. Just where you are, that is also being honest with God. Don't say, Father, I will talk about you when I will have 1,000 followers. I will talk about you when, no. Just start, just be very honest where you are. Can you talk about me even when you have zero followers? Can you talk about me to your children, to your partner, or you leave them in the house and go to church and climb on the pulpit and attend all the groups and then talk, 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 and then go back home and it's fire, fire, fire. No, that's being dishonest with God. What's the whole point? Okay, Father, so help us. Help us to really think about this and all the examples in the Bible and what it cost them when they were dishonest with you. And that is no point, frankly speaking. You are not only our Father, you are the Almighty, Omnipotent, Omnipresent. How can we lie to you? How can we hide from you? It's not possible. It's not feasible. It, it makes no sense, Father, and it leads to nowhere. So give us this grace. We pray that we always remember we can't. We can't. It's, it's worse than lying to our own selves, lying to our Creator. And which parent will want the child to lie to them? We, early parents, we cannot stand it. Some say they don't tolerate lies. I don't. I encourage my children. You better tell me the truth. And then we talk about it. <clears> that for me to discover you told me a lie. I also learned that very tough lesson from my mom. And it cost me so much. And so I would rather say my truth today and let what let hell get let loose. But than to tell a lie. I try, Papa. We all try. I'm very sure of that. Just continue to give us your grace, Holy Spirit. Continue to just blow in our lives, take control, because without you, we just cannot continue on this walk of faith. Help us, Master Jesus, in your mighty name, I pray this morning. Amen. Okay, well, so this is it. This was the first time I was recording, and um, I'm just happy that I did it. You know, um, obedience is better than sacrifice, so... Yes, I obeyed, and then, um, yeah, I came and sat out here, and I'm going to do ministration just after this before I go back into my room, because on Wednesdays, I do morning glory moment and ministration. I'm grateful that there is no rain, and then um, there will be morning glory moment again on Friday morning. The internet is back. I'll do it live. If it's not back, then I'm still going to record it and upload it later. The most important thing is, be honest with God, do your best, you know, and then uh, I think he sees all of that. He does, not that I think, and um, he's happy, he's pleased with that. What's the point? What's our purpose on earth if it's not to live a life uh, of of servitude and a life that brings him glory in the mighty name of Jesus? Amen.